Yo, what's poppin' dudes and dudettes, this is LEGO Jake here, and welcome to part 20 of our Ben 10 Power Trip Let's Play, The Big 2-0, where we finally get to witness the ending to this awesome game, and more importantly, beat Hex's ass, who's had it coming for far too long at this point. As I've mentioned several times throughout this Let's Play, I will be doing extras videos, finishing up side missions, and gathering up collectibles I missed, so while this is the end of the story, this is not the end of our journey together, so don't even worry about that. Hex is honestly just a small roadblock and an otherwise vast ocean of things we need to do in this game, so... Yeah, we'll be here a while. Insolent boy! Couldn't just enjoy your vacation, could you? You had to play the hero. You know what I always say? It's hero time! I won't let you get away with this, you glorified party magician! Ha! <laughs> Do you not remember how this went last time you challenged me? How? Aliens or not, you stand no chance against me! Bend to my will, physical world! Bruh, sorry Hex, that's that Omnigard power, my G. You can't hurt us like that anymore. We got as much power as you. Even though he is pretty much Thanos at this point, he has all four power crystals, which are definitely not Infinity Stones, and we are officially battling him one-on-one, -on -one, even though he has lots of his minions, so I guess it's not technically one-on-one, -on -one, whatever. The strategy for battling Hex is basically exactly the same as it was for all three of the other elemental bosses he sent at us in the past. There's ruin challenges like we've seen four million and ten times this Let's Play. The pink ruin stone thingies have force fields around them with a bunch of enemies guarding it. And to break the force field and destroy the stone, you have to defeat all the enemies around it. There's three ruin stone challenges providing a defensive shield to Hex, so you've got to destroy all three before you can damage him at all. The biggest difference here compared to anywhere else in the game thus far is that the enemies we're fighting are a lot stronger defense wise and attack wise and there's a lot more of them so the battles themselves are significantly tougher than usual but overall it's nothing that should cause too many problems it's still pretty simple stuff but while it is relatively simple in concept it's still a pretty solid fight especially if you're like me and you're not upgraded much up to this point your skills are certainly going to be put to the test some of these hulking titan enemies can seriously put the beat down on you when they're all grouped together. I'd really recommend you strategize within this fight to use your alien's powers accordingly, because they're all useful in some random special way. For instance, Diamond Head's shield can come in handy before you jump out, grapple someone, and destroy them with Shock Rock, or using Heat Blast, for instance, to light enemies on fire before unleashing your Fists of Fury with XLR8. That can also be a fantastic method of taking out your foes. Basically, I'm saying just use each of your aliens for some reason or another. I guess that right there is really the biggest, biggest difference between this fight and the elementals that came before it the Omniguard and free use of any alien we want. And because of that, again, I'd highly recommend using them all because you can. Unless you're just a beast with a singular character, then I guess just use them. I don't know. <laughs> But to be honest, I'm sure if you're at this point in your own game, then you probably already have your own strategies, or maybe you upgraded your characters to max potential and maybe you're just beating everyone's ass and doing way better than me. I don't know. Uh, what I do know is that because last episode we decided to take a little break after we kind of ran out of gameplay stuff to talk about, because we're just in this little void area fighting off baddies, you see what's going on. We read some bad reviews of this game, and I thought this episode, at least until we get to the Hex battle, it could be kind of fun to read a few good reviews, maybe some funny ones, so let me go grab some. Alright, I found about four of them on Google. These are pretty good. We'll start with this one. Um, they gave it five stars and said, This game is AMAZING, all caps. I LOVE IT, all caps. I will believe that this is the BEST, all caps, Ben 10 game EVER, all caps, created. I really enjoy being XLR8 so I can get to places faster instead of using that useless scooter. <laughs> Don't we all? But I wish Cannon Bolt made it into the game, again, don't we all? But that's OKAY, all caps. I love playing 3D games on my Nintendo Switch, happy face. 
Well, I don't have a Nintendo Switch, so I don't know about all that, but I can definitely agree with the Scooter and Cannonbolt sentiments. Very true. Next up, <laughs> this one is awesome. He gave the game five stars, a full perfect rating, but said, haven't played it yet, but I already know I love it. So, yeah, five stars from me. And I mean, hey, I can't argue with that, that's very accurate. And, really quick, while we're taking on Hex, I should at least explain his powers and stuff. And don't worry either, we'll get right back into the reviews after we talk about this. I just gotta explain the boss, because I don't want you guys to struggle. Uh, and hopefully you haven't struggled too much with the Ruin Challenges, or you're really gonna be in for a treat with Hex himself, as he's got three different abilities that are all annoying as hell to deal with. He's got a laser beam, a caustic explosive blast, and an icy shockwave, all of which do a tremendous amount of damage to you, and are all hard as hell to dodge. Not not gonna lie at all, Hex is a pretty infuriating fight that honestly just takes a lot of luck to win against, and the only real tips I have are to, again, try your best to dodge his attacks, maybe you'll learn some sort of a pattern, I don't know, and I'd say primarily use XLR8 to punch him so you get as many attacks off at once as possible because he obviously punches super fast. And overall, just try to hope for the best. After a few tries, I'm sure just about anyone could win against him. No! I have the power of all four crystals at my fingertips. How can I be defeated by a puny child? Bend to my will, physical world. So yeah, for anyone that was thinking maybe that fight seemed like it was a little too easy, didn't last very long, like maybe I was capping about the difficulty, no, there's a whole other like section to this fight. And first we have to run up this giant staircase which gives me Halo Reach custom vibes, like it reminds me of uh, Achievement Hunter Horse, that, uh, you guys remember that? That was a long time ago, that was an awesome series, but yeah. <laughs> it's hero time! So, here we are in Phase 2, and this is literally the same fight as Phase 1. He has the same three powers, the same sort of pattern, he's the same exact boss. I think he might have slightly more health this time around, because he seemed like he was a little bit harder, actually died like three times taking on this Part 2 of the boss, so he does seem a little bit beefier, but strategy remains the same. Use XLR8, try to get off as many attacks as you can before he gets off his attacks, and do your very best to dodge his annoying lasers and whatnot, because they take away way too much of your health. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. Let's get back into the reviews. Come on, that was a lot more fun, huh? So when I started reading these off, I obviously said that I had four of them, but I went and found a couple more because we have just a little bit more time to kill, so I figured why not. This first one is five stars and says, This game's is the best, and you get the aliens for free in the game. And I mean, I don't know, I don't know, can you disagree with that? That seems pretty intellectual if you ask me. He's right, you do get the aliens for free. Maybe he means, uh, thank God it's not downloadable content or like, pay-to-play type stuff. Not sure, I wouldn't want to spend $60 and then pay to play a game, just saying. Also, uh, this guy gives it only three stars and says, Very peaceful game. I like it. And directly under that, five stars, I'm going to blow up. I'm going to blow up. This is amazing. I can't believe it. And what in God's name does that mean? Do they mean that the popularity of the game is going to blow up? Or are they talking about... I don't know, I'm so worried for this person, are they okay? <laughs> Tennyson! This is not the end. I will become the most powerful magician this world has ever seen! And if not, at least I'll be ruining your vacations! <laughs> Actually, I saw all of Strudelbeck and didn't get bored once. This has been a pretty good vacation after all. Ben? Where's Hex? Are you alright? He won't be giving us any trouble. For a while, at least. Nice job, Ben. Hey, I had plenty of help along the way. Think. Without Hex, we wouldn't have gotten to see all this beautiful scenery. In fact, this detour gave me time to find ten more stops for the next leg of our trip. All highly educational. Thank you. 
I should really get moving. What's the holdup? Where to? Before we head out, you may want to finish helping the people of Strudelbeck. Defeating Hex seems to have closed off the void, but any remaining magic still needs to be banished. Feel free to keep exploring. Gwen and I are keeping busy trying all the local cuisine. Mm -mm. Yeah, take all the time you need. Well, alrighty then, folks. Hex is defeated. We finished up his fight without even talking about him. We were just reading off reviews. And we are officially in the endgame. I'll see you guys next episode. Peace out.